At Red Barn, our pet food ingredients work overtime. They aren't just there for show. Dandelion greens work to maintain a healthy digestive system. Salmon oil works to enhance the immune system. Green-lipped mussels work to support joint health. These hard-working ingredients support your dog's active, healthy life. Look at the label. We want you to. Red Barn Naturals Pet Food, simply the best. Find it in your local pet specialty store. Visit redbarninc.com slash coupon to save a dollar off your first can. Blog Talk Radio. Everybody, it's 1132 p.m. June 3rd, 2016. You got seven, and this is Urban Mystic Radio. Um, I'm sorry, I'm kind of tired trying to get myself together. Um, basically, the show is based off of the East Coast in Delaware, and this episode is pretty much a continuation of last week. Um, I had a guest by the name of Marcus Reeves. He's from Fayetteville, North Carolina. He's a Marine Corps veteran. And we're going to be talking about um, perception magic, egregores, sigils. Um, let me get him on the line. Hold on. Hello? What's going on? Hey, Marcus. Yes, ma'am. Hey, how's it going? Um... Actually, pretty good. How you been? Or how how y'all been? Because I don't know if your uh, your husband's there or not. No, he's not on right now. It's just me. Just me. Right. Um, doing good. Doing good. Trying to maintain. So yep. last week we got into a really good conversation and we had to cut it short, unfortunately. Mm-hmm. But um, we were talking about sigils and egregores and things of that nature but before we could even go into that we were kind of breaking down and defining what perception magic was yes ma'am and um um, yeah yeah i don't know what you wanted to bring up um now i know you had mentioned that you posted some stuff in the group order the serpent i've got um some of your posts up so whatever you wanted to get into and we just go from there Oh, um, um, it looks like we've just lost our guest, so let's uh figure out what's going on, see if we can get them back. Oh, yes, ma'am. Uh, I checked my phone and it hit my cheek and it uh, fell off. Um, yeah. Fine. <laughs> 
All righty, so um, where do you want to begin at? Um, actually, uh, I was going to actually further go into perception magic and how it because it, it's it's a massive topic, but it's so simple. Um, I know right. I remember last time on the show I was um I was going through a lot of topics, but I didn't really specify one thing which I know somebody can actually apply. But the one thing right. about perception magic is that um is is that even though it's such a massive complex system, it's so fundamentally simple. Um um Hold on, I'm I'm losing you. What'd you say? Sorry, I was trying to put my phone in. Actually, with perception magic, it's all about practicality because, like, there's a lot of systems out, like um, Thelemite, um, not Thelemite, um, Thelema, uh, Kabbalah, Enochian. All those systems are like powerful. No matter, like, they 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 can manifest results, but the entire system itself is so expansive. It's so, like, massive. Like, there's so much things that you have to know. There's so many things that you have to, uh, like, memorize that half the, t- like, half the time they try to take the journey towards becoming a better magician, like, it's spent in, like, failure of results, really. Um, so right. you have to keep figuring out what's the right combination of, of how to achieve a certain result from uh, any kind of working. Um, with Perception magic is all about control and then move forward, almost um, like like a sharpshooter, if you will. And every result that you're trying to get is you just hitting the target exactly. And then from that moment, you're continually building on, just like a sharpshooter, just like a sniper. You're always trying to find the next element to attack and then move forward on because there's a lot of things that I've tried to do, tried to do and have done that it, it manifested so quickly. So right now I'm going I'm to go right basically into how, how you can apply perception magic and how you can um, basically use it in day-to-day life. I remember you said, um, like you said, but you posted in the, uh, the group, um, it's like a little sigil, and then I, I think it was your mom she made it into like a statue or something like yes my mother in law um that that right there is like prime example of how to, how you can use something that's very simple a very simple object to influence you cuz i remember last time i was talking about like, let's say mcdonald's mcdonald's got um the golden arches and you can see the golden arch on the um on the highway from miles down the road but right you don't realize that because you're not really focused on the little signs that's going to come up to you as you're driving. No, you're just worrying about, you know, keeping your car on the road. Um, businesses, like, um, they know that. Monster, uh, bigger entities know that. And the more that they can influence you subtly to gain their product, the more that you uh, they gain. And in the same concept with perception magic, the more you can subconsciously influence, the more you can gain from. Um like I said before, with those statues, you want you want to create a sigil or some kind of represent, representational form that you can put up and like look away from. It's not right. like it's not something that you have to constantly um, uh, worship or something that you have to constantly invoke. It's just you're you're slowly changing your environment without you actually knowing it. Because again, it's not something that's com- it's not taking all of your conscious effort. Um, I like to also bring up your imagination. Now, people don't understand how important your imagination is when it comes to manifestation of any result. When you want to con- um, conceive, if you want to conceive an idea, the first thing you have to do is construct it in your mind. Let's say you want a new car. Um, before you even figure out what you're going to do with the car, you first have to construct the car in your mind. All right, what do I have? Now, normally people just take what's like around them and then they use that to manifest something. That's that's really hard. Like, um, for example, um, like you would go on Craigslist or whatever, you look at local cars in your area, and half the time you spend just waiting, going to this person, oh, that car's a fluke, or you go to that person, that car's a fluke, and it's the same thing with the, uh, with the ritual result. Like, oh, you tried this combination of spell work and this combination of divination, and you still got nothing. 
Um, right. You want to, again, you're, you're not really doing anything to um, change yourself in a drastic way. Again, you're just going on with your life, but there's just a slow hand behind you constantly moving you to wherever you want it to be. Um, and because of that, it's something that you're manifest. It's your imagination. It's you're just living in your own really reality. And people oftentimes call that insanity because, like, they're just they're hearing things and they're, like, they think, oh, like, this means that. Like, for example, like, the other day I had my mom found an, a turtle in the yard and then just recently there was an owl in um in front of my house. Uh-huh. And I was kind of crazy because, before, yeah, exactly, like, the um the symbolism behind that because I, I go with a lot of like Native American spirituality, uh, African spirituality, and understand how they worship and understood like nature. And um, right. when I saw that, I was like, okay, the turtle. Yeah, I see a little defense of this. I see like just that the more introverted self. Just you're just taking your own pace. You're not really worried about what's going on around you. Just stay protected within your own mind, and you know what I'm saying your own life. And uh, and then I saw the owl, and I'm like, okay, well, I see wisdom, like, off the bat. And then maybe a little bit of clarity, perception, perception, owl, perception, magic, you know. Um, uh, with that, I also uh, realized that I all, always had these bracelets that I wore. And one of them was a turtle, and one of them was an owl. And, oh, um, wow. Exactly. Like, it, it, it's, 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 it's subtle things it's like that that you'll – yes, ma'am. Oh, I was saying synchronicity. Exactly, synchronicity. And those small synchronicities is just like what I was saying before, that invisible hand that's guiding you in a certain direction. Uh, one person that I always wanted to bring up in the show that I didn't get a chance to do it in the last show was uh, Christopher Hunter Myers. Um, I don't – I want to say that we're close friends, but I know of him and he knows of me. And, like, a lot of stuff that I have made up, as far as, like, you know, my, the perception magic. Because, like, perception magic isn't, like, something that I made, rather, but just what I'm trying to give out to everybody else. Like, the concept right. is a little older than that. But um, what I did with perception magic, I got from him. Like, I just watched his videos and, like, really understood what he was go- what he was talking about. And it's crazy because the whole synchronicity thing came from, like, my idea of it came from him. Um, So, yeah, if anybody's listening, just, Go uh go to Facebook or whatever and just type in Christopher Hunter Myers and just just I don't know he, he's kind of like he's a little bit more introverted but he's still like extrovert he just does his own thing um right be cool and just like go go see his work he really got some good stuff um but back on perception magic um like I said before it's all about subtle influence now some people you can do this in two ways how I see it you can manipulate the people or you can manipulate your environment um. And, like, you know, if you, if you manipulate people, that's more like black magic. And right. Because, like, I was – and, um, like I said, I, I think I said in the last show, I always thought psychology was the first black magic. Um, when you – you can either influence the environment or you can influence people. Now, when you influence people, you're you're doing the same thing as far as, like, uh, getting subconscious uh, – sub, subconscious um, items or, it's like, symbols like you have with your um, – um, which you which you have with your statue? Um, or I, I really don't know. I can't remember what it was. If I call it, if it's not fact, I apologize for that. Um, uh, or you can do with the environment. I'm sorry, I'm sorry. That's, that's I'm not trying to uh go back over things. With the with the symbol, you're doing the same thing with um with yourself. So let's say, for example, I want to have somebody notice me. So. I would throw something out that would get their attention. Okay. It's like it's like you're you're it's like you're, you're it's like you're like you're baiting them almost, but you're doing it psychologically. You're doing it with small little gestures, or you might launch a sigil to create the manifestation of the result, the glitch in the matrix, the uh, the break of the loop, is like how we said last time. Um, and with that, you're going to bring that person that item, like for example, the car. Or you're going to uh, bring just all around everything towards you. And then also you can do it with the environment. Now, the environment is a little trickier because you can get a bigger manifestation, but it's not as easily controllable. Like, if you're trying to, like, manipulate a person, you can, like, manifest that in um, a, a day or so if you just know how to um, use.